Well, I'm your host, Mr. Dan Tamray Melly, and listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Tuesday, July 21st, 2020, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Film and television productions shut down in March as cities around the world entered lockdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Months later, some actors and directors are willing to make sacrifices so they can resume work. Others worry that rushing back could cause setbacks. Los Angeles released guidelines for film and television productions to resume following strict COVID-19 protocols June 12th. Productions outside L.A. were told to follow similar guidelines provided by the Directors Guild, the Screen Actors Guild, the Producers Guild, the International Association of Stage Employees, and the Teamsters Union. Film crews, uh, according to Kevin Bacon in a UPI interview said, are used to working in very unusual circumstances. Uh, he said uh, while working on his latest film, you should have left. He also added, people are pretty good at rising to the challenges. Rod Lurie, the director of The Outpost, says he is not sure filming could resume under the guidelines. Lurie feels that people could still contract COVID-19 despite the guidelines' best intentions of preventing the spread. Even if actors and filmmakers want to take the risk, Lurie believes the insurance companies that cover productions will not allow them to risk people's lives. Lurie says... I don't think what happens if two or three significant people on a movie set, by that I mean essential players, get the disease while they're shooting. Will there be insurance companies that will cover any of these things? I think we are way away from actually being able to start. Brent Colin, who stars in Big Dog, suggests that guidelines could add days to a production schedule. Different departments would take turns preparing a set for filming when those tasks use to occur simultaneously. However, that ability to separate actors from technicians makes Colin comfortable to return to work. He says he hopes HBO can start production on the untitled Lakers project in which he plays general manager Bill Sharman this, this summer. Colin says, my big concern is being in a room with someone close by. That's where I think most people are catching this infection. Some actors say that the industry is going back to work too soon. Amanda Siegfried whose movie You Should Have Left open on video on demand during the pandemic said the lockdown should continue. Setting in guide guidelines requires a healthy safety inspector or a supervisor to be on set. When new COVID-19 cases report daily. Secfree says she fears daily monitoring will be en- won't be enough to prevent the spread of the disease at work. Secfree says if COVID is still that rampant, then we truck on with social distancing and keep things shut down as much as possible. Mackenzie Davis, whose latest film, Irresistible, also opened on video demand, is scheduled to film the series Station Eleven as soon as it is safe. She says she hopes her production decides to wait because she anticipates another spike in COVID-19 cases. Davis says, I'm not desperate to get back to work, but that's a privileged position to hold. Davis and Siegfried acknowledge that many actors and crew members cannot afford to wait longer for work. Siegfried has difficulty reconciling the needs for others to work with risking their lives. Her husband, Thomas Sadowski, was directing Perry Street at the MCC Theater, but all of the New York Theater closed before it opened. Siegfried says it was heartbreaking. The point is to keep people from dying. Some productions have resumed. Josh Hartnett is in Paris filming the four-part HBO movie, Exterminate All the Brutes. He confirmed everyone involved with the production took a COVID-19 test, and wears masks while departments remain separate. Harnett says, I'm self-isolated when I'm not on set. I get in a car to work and come back to my hotel room. Sam Riley is quarantining with his children in their Berlin home so that his wife, Alexander Maria Lara, can return to work on the German series The Witnesses. He says that they will take the COVID-19 test every five days to confirm Lara has not been exposed. Riley says, we're happy to go back to, into quarantine if that's what it takes for everyone to start getting back to some sort of norm- normality. Many actors agree that the government and Gill guidelines are thorough. Ron Perlman, starred in Peacocks of Capture, believes the guidelines will continue to evolve as scientists 
and the industry learn more. Perlman says, we're living in shifting sands under our feet. Eventually, we're going to get this right, and we're going to figure it out. Director Judd Apatow, who released The Kings of Staten Island on Video on Demand on June 12, says he believes the entertainment industry will make a select few productions the test case for new protocols. Apatow says, I don't think it's going to ramp up at all at once. I'm sure there will be a process of learning how to do it in the best way possible. If the protocols prove effective, more productions might resume. However, if productions find working with the, within these protocols unfeasible, or if they fail to prevent the COVID-19 spread, actors like Colin are confident they will not proceed. Colin says, I do know that if things start going array, they'll shut it down again. The release of Christopher Nolan's film Tenant has been delayed once again due to the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. Deadline reported Monday that Warner Brothers has postponed the release and is prepping the film for an unconventional rollout in theaters. Tenant was initially scheduled to open in theaters July 17th, but was previously delayed to June 31st. The release date was pushed back again in June to August 12th. The film is expected to fil- first open overseas, where theaters in China, South Korea, and other countries have been reopening. Tenant will be released in the U.S. when it is safe to do so. Sources cite a possible September 11th release. The Hollywood Report says Tenet may be released in the U.S. first in cities where theaters can safely reopen. Warner Brothers is expected to announce a new plan in the coming days. Warner Brothers Pictures Group Chairman Toby Emmert says, Our goals throughout this process has been to ensure the highest odds of success for our films while also being ready to support our theater partners with new content as soon as they can safely open. He also added, We will share a new 2020 release date in imminently for Tenet. Christopher Nolan's wholly original and mind-blowing feature. We are not treating Tenet like a traditional global day and date release, and our upcoming marketing and distribution plans will reflect that. Warner Brothers is also delaying the release of The Conjuring 3, which was slated for a release September 11th. The movie will now open in theaters June 4th, 2021. Tenet is Nolan's first film since Dunkirk, released in 2017. The new movie stars John David Washington, Robert Pattinson, and Elizabeth DeBecky, and released a new trailer in May. HBO Max announced on Monday that CNN's documentary film, On the Trail, Inside the 2020 Primaries, will premiere August 6th on the streaming service. On the Trail, Inside the 2020 Primaries was produced by CNN Films and follows a team of female journalists as they report on the presidential election. Dana Bash, Caitlin Collins, Jessica Dean, Daniela Diaz, Annie Grayer, Killian Light, MJ Lee, Abby Phillip, Arlette Sons, and Jasmine Wright make up the film's roster of journalists. The documentary will begin just days prior to the Iowa caucus and show how journalists leave their families to travel across the country, launch an ending of campaigns, and what it takes to be a top political reporter will also be covered. Sarah Aubrey, the head of original content at HBO Max, said in a statement, We're incredibly proud to partner with CNN Films to showcase these fearless and impressive female journalists as they navigate the unpredictability of life on the road during the unprecedented 2020 presidential primary. She continued by saying this is our first CNN Films documentary on the platform and a powerful representation of our commitment to create thought-provoking and deep, meaningful content together. Disney Plus is giving a glimpse of Beyonce's visual album, Black is King. The streaming service released a new trailer for the Project Monday featuring footage of Beyonce and the 38-year-old singer as a narrator. The preview follows a young boy as he grows and makes a series of life-altering choices. Beyonce says, You who were formed by the heat of the galaxy, what a thing to be, both unique and familiar, to be one and the same, and still unlike any other. She adds, life is a set of choices, lead or be led astray, follow your light or lose it. Black is King is based on The Lion King's The Gift, the album Beyonce released in uh, 2019 for Disney's Lion King's remake. Beyonce voiced Nala in the photorealistic remake, which opened in theaters In July 2019, Black is King will reimagine the lessons from the Lion King for, quote, today's young kings and queens in search of their own crowns. 
Busy previously said in the press release, the story follows a, quote, young king's transcendent journey through betrayal, love, and self-identity. Marissa Hargitay and Christopher Maloney tease on Instagram a reunion between their Law & Order SVU characters on upcoming spinoff series Law & Order Organized Crime. Hargitay captioned the selfie, which featured herself and Maloney standing together and smiling, easy like Sunday morning. She continues to portray Olivia Benson on Law & Order SVU, while Maloney previously starred as Elliot Stabler for 12 seasons. Maloney will reprise his role in Law & Order Organized Crime, a spinoff of SVU, which will follow Stabler as he returns to the NYPD to battle organized crime after a devastated personal loss. Law & Order Organized Crime will air Thursdays at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on NBC this fall after SVU, which is heading into its 22nd season. BBC America announced on Monday that Top Gear will return with a new special and new episode starting on August 30th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The special will air first on August 30th. A new episode will then air every Sunday for six weeks. Hosts Freddie Flintoff, Patty McGinnis, and Chris Harris will visit Nepal in the special and travel to Kathmandu to the foreign city of Lomantan. BBC America released a teaser trailer for the new episodes, which will feature the Top Gear gang, Budgie jumping in the car, a race between a fighter jet and the latest McLaren hypercar, and a road trip through Peru. The Budgie jump stunt will be performed on a 540-foot dam. Alex Trebek appeared on Good Morning America to discuss how he is undergoing an experimental treatment for his pancreatic cancer, new memoir, and the help he receives from his wife, Jean Trebek. The Jeopardy host said on Monday about his wife, she's a saint. She has so much goodness in her that she is always giving out, always putting out to help me get over difficult moments, and there have been some difficult moments. I'm just in awe for the way she handles it. It is why getting choked up. Trebek, who announced that he was diagnosed with stage 4 pancreatic cancer in March 2019, is undergoing an experimental immune therapy treatment. Trebek is seeking, uh, is seeing positive results, but note that if it doesn't work out, he won't pursue any extraordinary measures. The 79-year-old said that his family handled the news well. Alex Trebek says they understand there is a certain element regarding quality of life, and if the quality of life is not there, it's hard sometimes to push and just say, well, I'm going to keep going even though I'm miserable. Trebek's memoir titled The Answer Is Reflections on My Life will be released on Tuesday. He says, I've received so many expressions of love and so many prayers said on my behalf since the diagnosis was made public that I thought, well, maybe the people would care to learn something about me. Little Mix The Search, a new talent show featuring the British girl group Little Mix, is coming to BBC One in the fall. The BBC shared a teaser and a fall premiere date for the reality competition series Monday. The preview shows Little Mix members Perry Edwards, Jesse Nelson, Lee Ann Pinnock, and Jad Thruall arriving on and marveling at the show's pink and purple hued set. Edwards says, we can't wait for everyone to finally see what, what we've been working on because it's so good. This show is something we've wanted to do for a long time. A little mix to search, little mix will create and mentor new bands. Performers selected for the bands will live together have, and have access to little mixes, vocal coaches, songwriters, and producers. Thurwall says the auditions were great fun to film. So much talent auditioned for the show, and that it was generally thought to decide who should go through. There's a lot of twists and turns. The new series is filming in accordance with new safety guidelines about the COVID-19. Little Mix was formed during the X Factor UK Season 8 in, in 2011. The group released its fifth studio album, LM5, in 2018 and the new singles Breakup Song and Holiday this year. Edward says on the Hearts Beats uh, Heart, uh, Breakfast radio show in March, that Little Mix's sixth album is on hold due to the coronavirus pandemic. Savannah Guthrie is undergoing another surgery on her eye. 
a Today host who's 48 said on the show Monday that she was leaving early to have cataract surgery on her right eye. Guthrie was injured in November when her son Charlie threw a toy train at her eye. Guthrie's retina was detached and she previously had retina reattachment surgery in December. Guthrie told her co-host Monday, well guys, it's not over. So apparently if you have that retina reattachment surgery, it's very common to get cataracts. So that happened to me. So I'm actually going to leave in 20 minutes and have cataract surgery. Guthrie has been experiencing distorted and blurred vision due to the cataract. She said of the surgery, I'm so excited. I feel like it's Christmas morning because if they remove this cataract, I'll really be able to see. And I've had a, a hard time seeing. Guthrie hopes to return to today later in the week. Guthrie has two children, Charlie and daughter Vale, with her husband, Michael Feldman. In April, Guthrie's kids unexpectedly joined her on air as she filmed Today at Home. The Today cast and crew are now back in the studio, but practicing social distancing and other safety measures due to the coronavirus pandemic. Israeli supermodel Bar Rafeli and mother Zipa Rafeli formally admitted to tax evasion charges in Tel Aviv Monday as part of a plea agreement that will allow the entertainment star to avoid prison. Uh, at least as part of the deal, the model will perform nine months of community service, pay a $720,000 and $2.3 million in back taxes. Zippy Rafeli, her mother, will serve 16 months in jail and also must pay a fine and back taxes. The court determined that the pair evaded taxes on as much as $10 million in income. The case includes Bar Rafeli's work between 2009 and 2012 when she was required to pay taxes in Israel and overseas. Rafeli argued that she was in a relationship with actor Leonardo DiCaprio in the United States during that time and had been under U.S. tax jurisdiction. Israeli tax officials said she actually lived in Tel Aviv during that time under the names of different family members. Rafeli, who has been married to businessman Ada Areza since 2015, gave birth to their third child in January. Golnessa Gigi Garacha Dahi says her Shah as a Sunset co-star Mercedes Javid needs authentic change for their relation for their friendship to progress. The 38-year-old television personality and her co-star Riza Farhan clashed with Javid during part one of Shah's of Sunset season eight, viral, uh, virtual reunion Sunday on Watch What Happens Live. When asked if she believes her relationship with Javid is getting back on track, Garhache Dahi says not at all. She says, this is the first time I'm hearing her give values to her mistakes, but until the day comes that I see that authentic change in her and really just see the change, I can't really build on a new friendship. I do love when she reaches out to me. Earlier in the episode, Javid praised Garhache Dahi for becoming a single mother. Javid said she sent Garhache Dahi a, written, a handwritten note to congratulate her on her baby boy's birth. Javid says, I think what makes her an amazing mother is that she has the courage to do it herself. Farhan then called out Javid for being hypocritical for praising Jahar Chahad Jahi. Uh, Javid previously said that her co-star as a Sultan Rahmati was having a bastard child. Javid said on Watch What Happens Live, defending her past remarks about Rahmati, Back then, I was, completely, I was completely emotional, broken. My dad was in a horrible place, and I was half a bottle deep in Patron. Gahar Dahi responded, But you're saying that because you were going through something and drinking and acting a certain way. That should be the excuse. When I was going through that, when I was going through my pains, and I picked up the bottle and fighting, you guys ousted me completely. Gahar Dahi gave birth to her first child son, Eliza, Elijah in April. Watch What Happens Live. Mark Shoud and Nima Vaughn also discuss how they were kicked off a plane in Arizona, which was captured during Shaw's of Sunset Season 8. The pair said that they were discriminated against because they are Middle Eastern. Shahed says the police had to come and escort us off the plane. Vaughn added, which was humiliating. Part 2 of the Shaw's of Sunset Season 8 reunion airs Sunday, July 26th. On Watch What Happens Live on Bravo.
Nicki Minaj is going to be a mom. The 37-year-old rapper is expecting her first child with her husband, Kenneth Petty. Minaj shared the news Monday on Instagram alongside photos of her baby bump. She captioned one post, hashtag preggers. Minaj voiced her excitement in another post. She wrote, love, marriage, baby carriage, overflowing with excitement and gratitude. Thank you all for the well wishes. Actors Halle Berry, singers Sam Smith and Jesse Nelson, television personality Kristen Calavari, and rapper Russ were among those to congratulate Minaj in the comments. Berry wrote, yes, congratulations, beauty. Smith said, congratulations, beautiful. Minaj and Petty married in October. The couple were first linked in November 2018. Minaj discussed her relationship with Petty on her Apple Music show, Queen Radio, in June 2019. She says, I think I have what I was striving for, just happiness. It was so hard to get to a happy place. Now that I'm here and there, I don't want to compromise that for anyone or anything. Minaj released her fourth studio album, Queen, in 2018, and most recently released the single Trolls with um, Takaji 6 9 in June. She appeared as a guest judge on RuPaul's Drag Race Season 12 in February. And finally, the estate of late Soundgarden frontman Chris Cornell has released his rock stars cover of Guns N' Roses' 1989 track, Patience, in honor of what would have been his 56th birthday. A post about the cover said Monday on Cornell's official Facebook page, his birthday seemed the perfect time to share this and celebrate Chris, his voice, music, stories, and art. It is true, a man is not dead while his name is still spoken, and through his art, an artist's soul still burns just as bright as ever upon all those that looked up to him and his memory. Uh, the post continues releasing music that was special to Chris. He was a part of him here with us. His heart and his soul, his love, and his legacy. Cornell's cover of Patience was uploaded to his official uh, YouTube channel. Cornell sings on the track, said woman, take it slow, and it'll work out itself just fine. All we need is just a little patience. Said sugar will make it slow, will come together fine. All we need is a little patience. Cornell died by suicide at the age of 52 in May 2017. Cornell's 20-year-old daughter, Lily Cornell Silver, is launching a mental health series titled Mind Wide Open Monday on IGTV at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The series hopes to destigmatize talking about mental health and will feature an interview with the founder of the Trauma Stewardship Institute, Laura Van Der Noop Lipsky. Cornell Silver said in a statement, as someone who has suffered from trauma and loss, as well as struggled with anxiety and depression, I know how important it is to have a space to talk openly and without shaming about these objects. There is so much value, especially for people my generation, in knowing that everyone struggles with mental health at some point in their lives, D uh, despite our society's demissive uh, uh, tendencies around emotional well-being. It is important for me to give voice to these issues by providing information, honest conversations, and resources through Mind Wide Open. And as the Entertainment Report for Tuesday, July 21st, 2020, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at The Enter Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.